So transitions are hard for for every child, but with an ADHD brain, they are really, really hard. So meltdowns are very common. Um, so one thing that you can do for transitions is really try to set clear expectations and have, mm -hmm. you know, set your kids up for success, like whatever the transition may be. Like. Hello and welcome back to the Ignition Path Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Goodnight. Before we get into the show, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, make sure that if you're listening to this and our guest or I say anything that resonates with you or anybody else that you know, don't forget to hit that share button and just push it right out to that friend of yours to get them to hear this con conversation and, and the content that we create here on the Ignition Path Podcast. So I'm excited to talk to you today about Christina Manning. She is my guest today, and uh, she's got a great uh, discussion about her path through entrepreneurialism. And, oh, I said that really well that time. A, non, a lot of times I fumble that. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and let uh, Christina introduce herself and, and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and then just talk about, like, what you did prior to becoming an entrepreneur or when you thought maybe you could be an entrepreneur. Talk about that path, and then don't go all the way into what you're doing now. We'll get into that later. But just let's talk about that path that got to where you are for now. Absolutely. So in my former life, I was a classroom teacher. I taught third grade for a while, and then I got my master's in school counseling. And during the pandemic, as it turned into a mental health crisis for pretty much Everyone. all adults and kids, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, it was a, a very, very striking to see how many kids, um, especially with ADHD, were really, really struggling. I mean, every child struggled during the pandemic, but kids with ADHD thrive on routine and structure. Mm. And so when they had to start learning at home, it was just incredibly difficult. Um, and so a lot of parents were reaching out to me and they were like, Christina, how do I, you know, how do I support my ADHD kid at home? You know, they're having meltdowns daily, you know, and being out of the routine is really, really tough. So that was pretty much the catalyst for what made me create my, my, um, brand called Minds. And so now I'm not, I won't get into it too much, but I do, I am a parent coach for kids of ADHD. So, so you're a parent coach. Do you actually coach the, the children as well, or just the parents to help them manage it? Uh, mainly the parents, because it always starts with the parents. Um, yeah, I give them lots of tips and we create routines and yeah, I really help the parents because a lot of times parents who have a recent diagnosis with their child with ADHD, they really have no idea how an ADHD brain works and the best and most effective ways to support them. So, right. yes. Well, you know, and that's, it, you know, I've, I have an ADHD child as well, and he's 23 now just as, as of yesterday. So, well, two days ago, the 29th. So he, he turned 23 on the 29th and we diagnosed him through official means um, back when he was probably in sixth or seventh grade, right around there. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty unique because I have, I'm learning disability. I'm, I've had a learning disability my entire life. So I was probably ADHD prior to, and probably would have had one of those, um, what do they call them when they have a program? An IEP or a 504 IEP, IEP, yeah. IEP, yeah. I would have, yes. I would have <laughs> easily been labeled in the IEP program. I had special tutors growing up uh, all the way through elementary and junior high. High school was more of uh, I actually went to separate classes. I'd go to my homeroom class and then I would leave for the day, come back at lunch and recess and then come back and then come back at the end of the day. So, so I, was I was pretty outcasted, outcasted in the beginning, in the beginning um, before, before any of this stuff. This I mean, stuff we're talking, talking, you know, 70s and, 70s and early 80s. 80s. I was graduating in 1990. 1990 so, so, you know, we're talking about. about you know, thank goodness my mom and dad moved me to a school district that actually had proper, you know, uh, education path for this, but it wasn't called IEP back then. So, right. you know, but, you know, by the time I got in high school, I had all the people that used to pick on me want me to help them study because what my learning disability did through my back then non, you know, IEP back then was mm -hmm. taught me how to study. And, you know, when we got Carter diagnosed with ADHD and through the process of that, um, since I was never labeled ADHD, I remember sitting with the doctor and as he's going through and talking about Carter and, and all the things that he's telling us about how his diagnosis came, I look over at my wife and my wife looks over at me and I'm like, and she's pointing at me and I'm pointing at myself. I'm like, oh my God, I'm ADHD, you know, <laughs> let alone learning disability, you know, let alone le letting 
let alone learning disabled. I mean, I'm, I'm successful. Like, you know, I've, I've had multiple businesses. I'm a podcaster. I'm a voiceover actor. I'm a paramedic. I mean, it hasn't slowed, slowed me down. Me down. No. I mean, I, I save people's lives for a living. So I, I'm not stupid. And that's what a lot no. of people think that the IEP is. is you, have, you learn no. differently. And same thing with the ADHD stuff. So we did notice that having a routine was huge. And we, you know, red dye and all of that stuff. And any of the dyes and diet really affect ADHDers. Oh, yes. And we were very strict on that in the beginning. So talk a little bit more about um, when you, not just working with ADHD children in your in your school and the mental health struggle that COVID was, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, where where did your passion really come in? Was it, was it, did you have some of that beforehand? Have you had ADHD issues of your own or people that you know and from the, you know, from prior to wanting to get out of the educational space and, and take on your own thing? Yeah, so I definitely believe I have ADHD. I've never been diagnosed. Um, actually, when I started coaching, I asked my doctor, I'm like, I, I really believe that I have ADHD. Like, I've always been the like space cadet in class, like on my report card, like this again was in the 90s. So ADHD wasn't really a thing back then. It would just say, oh, Christina often zones out and she's more concerned about talking to her friends than completing her work. And yeah, that was totally me on like every report card, social butterfly. Um, and, but it obviously I didn't have that formal diagnosis, but I still as an adult struggle with focusing and prioritizing tasks. And, you know, just when I try to do a task, I'll sit down, but then I'll do like 800 things at the same time I'm doing that task. So 100% that certainly has to do with why I'm so passionate about this because I really want to try to flip the script because like you said, there is this stigma. Like people think that people with ADHD are stupid and they just need more consequences and they're just bad, badly behaved kids, but that's not it at all. I've worked with the most gifted kids with ADHD. It is a superpower. It has absolutely nothing to do with intelligence. An ADHD brain is like, they say it's like, a Ferrari engine with b- bicycle brakes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. Oh and my I... gosh, that's a great explanation because that's exactly what I am. You know, I yes. am go go go. You know, like I mentioned, I have multiple businesses. I'm a handyman. I'm a voiceover actor, and I run. I have my own two podcasts, and I run six other podcasts. So wow. it, it, that's amazing. And I'm a full time paramedic, where every third day I go and serve my community. And you know, a lot of us in the first responder world are ADHD because. That rush, you know, my yes. favorite place to when I worked in a hospital, my favorite place to work was the ER. You want to know why? Because I oh got God. that adrenaline rush every time something came in that was crazy. And it yes. was this this severe focus for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And then it was then it was calm for a little bit. And then the next one, you know, and and, you know, my dopamine levels were I loved working at the hospital. But until I got to the point where it but I'd come home and I could barely walk because I'd, you know, I'd, I'd walk 12 miles at the hospital. I mean, in a 12 hour shift. Yeah. As a respiratory and, therapist. Yeah, absolutely. And and to kind of piggyback off of that, yeah, people with ADHD have typically lower dopamine levels. So mm-hmm. like you said, like they're, we're always seeking out like yeah. excitement and thrill. So a lot of times with ADHD, I mean, there's two different types. There's the hyperactive and then there's mm-hmm. the inattentive or there, there's the combined where you have both. Um, but a lot of times with ADHD kids, they'll like poke at their sibling or they're making a noise or they'll do something that's annoy, quote unquote annoying, but it's really because they're trying to create their own excitement. Yeah. You know, yeah. they have such low dopamine. So yeah. that makes so much sense. And that's amazing that, you know, you're just hanging out with people with cardiac arrest and it's. Well, I'm calm. Like right? I'm one of them, you know, so I didn't know what anxiety was until I got into the corporate world. You know, I, really? I deal with mm-hmm. I deal with cardiac arrest. I deal with people with difficulty breathing. I deal with children being hurt. You know, everything. I'm about childbirth. I've delivered my first baby a couple of months ago in my career. I've wow. seen many. I've seen many births in the hospital setting, but as a paramedic, I de- actually delivered my first baby um, a couple months ago. And you know, it's one of those things where, when I got into the corporate world because of my because of my background and my my clinical side of things, and I was also in medical sales for a while as well. Um, I got recruited to help develop new medical supplies, and it was very corporate. I went to an oh, office, I sat, I sat in a, in a cubicle, cubicle, and about three months in, I look up, and here I feel that the cubicle's coming in on me. And I'm like, I even to the point where I reached up and I grabbed it. 
And I'm like, oh, wait, I'm like, who's pushing the cubicle? No one. It was my brain and my mm-hmm. anxiety because of all. It. And I, I mean, I finally had to I had to quit that job beca- and go back to the clinical space because that's where I'm more comfortable. Call it, right. you know, knowing everything or call it whatever you want to call it, you know, calling it that rush. You know, there wasn't that much. There were some good things that were happening, things I was I was helping develop, bring and save lives in that other do- other job. But I never had that adrenaline rush. And I was working mm-hmm. 16, 16, 70 hours a week. You know, you know, and coming right. home, eating dinner, yeah, putting my kids to bed, and getting back into my computer, and that's just not how I work. I need to have, as an ADHD or yourself, you yes. know that we have to have our downtime just as much as we have our uptime. Oh yes, downtime is so so important. Yeah. just to be able to yep. rest our brains because, like, they are Ferrari engines going. Yeah, and exactly. Going. Yeah, and sometimes sleep isn't enough. Sometimes you just need a complete, you know, dump. One thing, one thing I want to ask you about and, you know, share with me what you talk about with your parents when it comes to procrastination. I feel that ADHD, mm-hmm. there's a built-in procrastination that happens to it. But then I've recently done a deep dive on procrastination, even with myself. Mm-hmm. And that'll actually, actually get us into my sponsor, sponsor here in a couple of minutes. But, yeah. um, you know, my procrastination is its own superpower sometimes <laughs> because mm-hmm. because I work so well under pressure. I procrastinate, I think, you know, because mm-hmm. when I'm like, okay, it really doesn't need to be done. There's no consequences if I don't do it until the last minute. You know, if I get it done and, but, and I've also noticed that there's no, there hasn't been any consequences yet with my procrastination because I get it done. There may be added stress, but talk a little bit about what you teach people when it comes to the procrastination uh, factor of ADHD. Absolutely. Have you ever heard of the Pomodoro theory? Uh, I I think I have. I couldn't recite it for you. Yeah. So one of the main things that I do when I work with parents is have them uh, apply the Pomodoro theory, which is basically just setting a timer and just first you you break down the tasks into small parts because with ADHD brains, it can become very, very overwhelming. You tell a child to go do three, an ADHD child to go do three things at once. They're not going to remember, you know, the executive functions with the working memory. Like they're they're not going to remember. So one is chunking, chunking mm-hmm. um, things into small parts. The Pomodoro theory is setting a timer for, and this can be adapted based on age. But they say like set a timer for twenty five minutes, and literally for that twenty five minutes, you're just going to focus on one task, right? But if, again, if it's a small smaller child, it might be ten minutes. Go do these three math problems in 10 minutes right so right. timers um yes making checklists and our, d- checklists. Our, our dopamine yeah when we <laughs> check things off oh it's <laughs> such a dopamine hit isn't it yes yes right, um right. yeah and just you know the adhd brains like i had mentioned before just really thrive on structure and routine so having visuals visuals so that we can know and what to expect and know like for a child, like I have to, we I've designed morning um, routines for parents. So like, get up, you know, put on my clothes, brush my teeth, breakfast, and have that checklist somewhere visible, like mm-hmm. in the child's bedroom or on the refrigerator or whatever. And then also have a checklist for the after school routine because I'm sure that you've heard. And you've probably experienced this yourself, Kyle, the after school meltdown when you come home and you just like pretty much fall apart. (laughs) Yeah, I do. That happens to me when I because I do a lot of training now. And so Mm -hmm. I'll go out there and I'll I'll have this huge rush of training. Mm -hmm. And then I may train anywhere between two and three stations in my day. You know, actually, I I go train on on Monday. I train all day long Mm -hmm. and I get back from training and I'll sit down finally and not driving, like sit down and not have anything in front of me to do. And it's like, like my friends like, are like, right. you literally like, you know, cause when, when, when you're, when you live 24 hours at a, at a, at a medic house, yes. you're allowed to, you're allowed to sleep, you know, to, you know, you're, you're allowed to sleep yeah. appropriately. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And we, and we, we have a living room and we have couches and we have, you know, lane, lazy boys and all the amenities of a house because we live there for 24 hours in 121 days a year. So we have all the amenities, right? So I've I've had my, and my wife will, my wife will tell me tell you this too, but I've been in the middle of a conversation and just fall asleep after a after a big day like that, right? Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. You're going and going. Yeah. So you know, back to the back to the whole, um, 
you know, talking about, you know, because some of the stuff you're saying, I'm like, I've lived it. I've gone through it with my son. I mean, yes. that timer, you know, and, and um, this is not a plug. This is not the sponsor, but I'm going to put a link into the timer that we used for Carter that we were suggested. Yeah. And it's and the, the visual, visual timer. timer. Yes. And it's, a, it's, it's, it's got, got red of like you turn it and it turns red. So when the red leaves and the red is, is gone, gone, you know, you your, know time your time is, is up. up. Mm -hmm. And it's a great timer. It's a visual timer because most ADHDers too, they don't have a concept of what the, what five, five minutes, minutes have been, no. what 10 minutes has been. They can, they can see, see a visual, a visual clock, clock of, of, oh, I've got a quarter, quarter of my, of my clock, clock left. left. Yes. And then it gets down to, oh, I've got this much of my clock left. Oh, I've got this much of my clock left. And people listening on the, uh, on the podcast and not watching it on YouTube, I was, I was actually using my hands as a, as a, as the, yes. as the time <laughs> shrank, you know, you know but, but, but yeah, yeah, so the visual clock is huge. And I'm sure you, you tell your parents about the visual clock because it was yeah. a game changer for us. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, um, you can really just go online and just like type in timer and they, I mean, I, I understand what you mean by like the ones that have the colors. Yeah. Um, those are really, really helpful, especially if you can't tell time yet. But for parents for sure. who are listening, if you just literally like type in timer in Google, you can have that timer and have that screen set up right in front of your child's like working space. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, that's one of the things that, um, that I really focused on with, with Carter was transition. So speak a oh, little bit about, that. because what we mm -hmm. found out that not only the plan, yeah, so, sure. and, and like I said, this is, this is like two ADHD parents and you know, one who actually created a course and helps parents and one who lived through it and actually knows exactly what she's teaching. And I wish you were around back then. Because we learned the hard way, <laughs> trial and error, you know, right, <laughs> instead exactly. of, but wait, I've learned all the things you're talking about. And one of them is we found out that with Carter and with me, and I'm sure with you, any of us mm -hmm. ADHD, ADHDers, we have a problem with transition. Yes. You know, because we're, we hyper-focus, we want to get this done. And if it's not done and not done in the way that we like it. And we got to do something new. Mm -hmm. It's it's like it's a meltdown to 100%, 100%. transition. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So, do you want me to talk on transition? Yeah, yeah, yeah please, so, please. Okay, so transitions are hard for for every child, but with an ADHD brain, they are really, really hard. So meltdowns are very common. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing that you can do for transitions is really try to set clear expectations and have, mm -hmm. you know, set your kids up for success, like whatever the transition may be. Like, even if it's something like we're going to grandma's house for mm -hmm. the Christmas party, there's going to be a lot yep. of people there. And, you know, just like really having that conversation about it might be loud. You yeah. might be overstimulated. And uh, we will eventually leave. So when you're finally having fun, you know that we got to leave. So when right. I come to you and tell you that we got to leave, don't have another meltdown, buddy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And and you know what? And also normalizing, like, it's okay to feel, like, yeah. overstimulated Aww. or yeah. angry or, like, nervous, you know? Just have a plan. Like, maybe if your child needs, like, a stress ball to squeeze when they're in, like, a, you know, high-stimulating um, environment. Um, or a plan to go to a quiet space, right? Mm -hmm. Also, like, let's say the transition is, okay, we are now leaving elementary school and you're going to be in middle school next year. So one mm. thing that I tell parents is 100% with your ADHD child, go visit the middle school, you know, drive by, go meet the teachers, you know. Walk through the um, halls. Walk through the halls, show them where the cafeteria is and show them where everything is so that they're familiar. Um yeah, but a lot of it is, and also visuals too. If you want to create a visual about, say, you're going on a trip with the family on a vacation and you want to just, you know, remind the child like what, um, or not remind them rather, but like set them up for success and let them know like what we're going to do first and what we're going to do next. And this might happen and just try to, it's just all about planning really and setting yeah. them up for success. Right. Um, so, Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, this would be a good spot to put in the uh, my sponsor. We'll talk about that for a couple of minutes, and we'll come back from the sponsor discussion, and uh, we'll talk more about the, your entrepreneurial path inside and, and what, what happened when you actually made the transition. So right, right now, now, a little word from our sponsor. Let me ask you a question. Would your life be better if whatever you're struggling with, you could finally break free of? So what am I talking about? The Funky Five. What's the Funky Five, you ask? It's those oh-so-familiar struggles procrastination, people-pleasing, 
perfectionism, low self-confidence, and the one I call the big A, anxiety. For years, I struggled to manage my own version. I call them my funky three. I had three of these funky five weighing me down. I've tried just about everything to deal with them. Then a guest on my podcast, Daniel Packard, shared with me a profound thought that I had never thought of. So Daniel, a UC Berkeley engineer, spent eight years working with this team and over 3,000 people to create an approach that doesn't just help you manage these issues. It actually frees you from them by getting right to the root of what's holding you back. So after meeting with Daniel, I decided to give it a shot. And within six short weeks, gone, truly gone. I was so amazed. The number one thing I was dealing with was procrastination. But miraculously, a deeper-rooted struggle with people-pleasing, something I'd been unknowingly battling for a lifetime, lifted entirely. And the anxiety that came with them both, gone as well. Are you tired of battling any of your funky fives? People-pleasing, procrastination, perfectionism, low self-confidence, and the biggest happy killer of them all, the A-word, anxiety. Imagine how much better life would be if you weren't just managing these things, but free of them, quickly, and yes, permanently. If you're ready for a real solution, head to danielpacker.com and get his free 90-minute training. Daniel himself will walk you through what makes his approach so different and teach you a technique you can use immediately to start feeling the difference. So if any of the Funky Five, or maybe your own version of the Funky Five, are holding you back, don't wait visit danielpacker.com. You can truly get results and start living the life you want. And we're back. And don't forget that Funky Five is real. And I lived the Funky Five, a three out of the Funky Five that I dealt with. I have now squashed. And uh, please, 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 if you have any of the Funky Five that we talked about in that, in that, 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 that uh, section there, go to Daniel's website and do the free evaluation. Uh, you won't you won't regret it. I am a different person now, and I've literally squashed my procrastination to almost nil. My anxiety is completely gone, and my people-pleasing, I'm still working on that one, but it's coming down. So, so back, back to Christina to and, and, her, um, uh, and, and her program. Let's talk a little bit more about when you made the transition from being a teacher, because on Ignition Path, we always like to talk about the path that we got to our entrepreneurial ways. Um, talk about the, those days that you decided to leave the teaching industry and go full time in this. What what was involved with that? Were there any funky five? Funky five is procrastination, anxiety, <laughs> yeah, uh, people pleasing, um, self self doubt. You know, those are you know one more. You know, those, so that's the funky stuff that we all deal with as entrepreneurs when we make that switch. So talk a little bit about that switch. Absolutely. So you know, I had spoke about how you know I have my own ADHD tendencies. I guarantee that I would be diagnosed with ADHD if I, you know, go and get a formal diagnosis. But with ADHD comes anxiety. ADHD and anxiety are very much, you know, come hand in hand. And I've struggled with anxiety my entire life. And as a teacher and then moving into a school counselor, I worked in a very, very high need school. I mean, I had to be trained on Narcan at an elementary school. Like it was it was really really intense and it was mainly for more the parents of the kids okay. but you coming never in know. dropping them off and then boom. right <laughs> being right. in their car after they drop their car kid off yeah okay right right <laughs> i mean i've been trained on an epi pen as a teacher but narcan yeah. is a, I was That's like, a whole wow. other story right so um i had my own anxiety you know i literally had a lot of i mean i'm not special everybody had mental health issues during the pandemic but I was literally having kids write on Google Classroom, I'm going to kill myself, and then I mm. wouldn't sleep that night. How Be could you? Right, exactly. I'm the counselor of the school, and, you know, in distance learning, it was very, very hard to get in touch with parents. And so, yes, I struggled with my own anxiety, which was part of my own burnout that led me to become an entrepreneur, which now is such a gift. Um, but, yes, at the time, I had my own struggles. Um, I was having panic attacks. I wasn't sleeping. Um, and I'm like, why don't I just turn this into a thing? Like, I'm going to move into parent coaching. I'm going to um, help parents with my passion of ADHD. And that's how I got started. And I have not looked back since. It's been the best decision ever. And that's I don't awesome. think I'd go back to the school system ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and that and that that makes some sense. And, and I totally get what you're saying because, mm -hmm. you know, we do know that 
there is a there is flaws in our schooling systems right now and yes and you know it needs a complete revamp but for the people that are living it and, and like yourself and have seen their kids go through it you know we're I'm lucky my kids and and I are really lucky that we're in one of the best school systems in all of Ohio and it's some wonderful. of the best some of the best, of the best grades, grades and, and Yes, yeah, there was, there was str a little bit of struggle, but thank goodness Carter was on the back end of his, his high school career. It was only the last three months of his high school career that COVID hit. Now, my daughter, on the other hand, she was a freshman at the time, and, and that was a little bit different. When to get her back into the flow once school started up again the, the next year, that was a little different and that hybrid stuff. Um, but she's a completely different kid than Carter was, too. She's not ADHD. She's very, you know, focused. She's very... They're both very smart, but she has the she's a female too, so she just has a drive to 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 study and to not get distracted and and all that. So she's she's not ADHD that I know of. I think she has some little bit of test anxiety, but you know who doesn't? Right, right, <laughs> you know, exactly. when you're nervous about how important you know nursing school is, but but it's right. one of those things. So talk a little bit about how. When when you came over from when you left that day, well, that yeah, day that you, you made, made that decision, decision. Mm -hmm. like was, was it, it like, like? Tell me what it was like. I I, th I think I know what it was like, but I want you to say it. Um, it was really scary. Okay, at first. well, there's that. Yeah. yeah, but it was also really liberating. <laughs> the you weight know? off your shoulder. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, you know, because I thought I I, I don't want to call working in a school like, you know, being in prison, but. Like you said, that the school system, the public school system, really, really needs a good revamp. I mean, kids literally are expected to sit there and sit still, which is so unrealistic. And um, yeah, and that's why kids fall apart when they get home, right? Because they're like, like little sheep throughout the entire day, and like we do this, and then we do that, and the bell rings, and then I do this, you know, like a a robot. Um, so that said, um, I'm so I. I couldn't have been happier to to leave that environment and have the opportunity to serve others, but also work from the comfort of my home. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah and get to know people and 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 honestly, just like myself, when I help people with podcasting, mm -hmm. I'm not stuck to the school itself and the people that are in that building, right? And the parents, parents that are in that building. That building. Mm -hmm. I am yeah, global. global. You right. are now global. Mm -hmm. You put out your message. You get someone that comes into your Facebook group or wherever wherever you get your leads from for people that need help, and they could be a whole other country. <laughs> you oh, know? I worked with parents in Australia. Yeah, exactly, yeah, and and that's amazing. what that is. That is true transformation of what we have to offer the world and our expertise and our passions. Yeah. And and it's the world. It's no longer our own community. Don't get me wrong. I've got a couple of people that I help in my own community, but yeah. and I would like I would like more because I love in person in per, in, in person uh, uh, meetups and and education and and teachings. But to be global like we are, I mean, oh, what a blessing! Right? I know it's such a gift. It <laughs> yeah. really is. Yeah. Yeah. And I never thought I I really like when I went back to school to be a counselor. I just figured I would be in the public school system for thirty years and retire right. and so um the pandemic in a way yes it had a lot of its challenges but it also provided a lot of opportunities yeah so, it really did mm -hmm. it really did my handyman business exploded during the pandemic i mean it's because people were needing offices at home they needed doors and walls built so they right. could have an office at home so i all of a sudden I, I did like six or seven uh room uh enclosures during the pandemic Wow, because... you're really a direct of all traits. You do everything. <laughs> well, my, my dad, you know, uh, you know that that kind of goes back into my my upbringing. My dad was in construction. When I was all, when I was old enough to swing a hammer, I would go to the sites with him. Or he they own prop they own twenty six properties back in the day. Um, and I would go with him to fix things at the property. I just kind of learned it through. You know, I was, you know, my mom and dad were both professionals, and my mom was a, a you know a multiple day you know she wasn't a stay at home mom when I was by the time I came I was the last of four and ten years closest to my um, closest sibling. So oops. Oh, oopsie. <laughs> but uh, hey, you know, best oops they ever had, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those things where. You know, I couldn't just stay at home. So dad was like, hey, come with me. You got to come with me because, you're, you know, you're not old enough to stay at home or what have you. Right. So I kind of learned that kind of stuff, you know, through uh, just through being around it. Um, you know, and then the main thing was when it came to when it came to my schooling and growing up, I wanted to mention this as well. Um, I'm, I'm just as I hear what you're saying and what you do for people. 
I just, I'm so blessed and lucky that my mom and dad moved me to the Westerville school system back in first grade. And it's Westerville, Ohio is where I live. That's a school system that was advanced better than, you know, it was more advanced for the, for the IEP, non-IEP, you know, the right. learning disabled mm-hmm. student back then. But even inside of that, my, I remember my eighth grade year, my, or my seventh grade year, my science teacher came to me and said, hey, Kyle, we're putting together a new curriculum for science, which was one of my one favorite, favorite subjects, subjects. Mm-hmm. because it was hands on. I understood it. Yes. It was almost like, you know, engineering stuff, right? Yes. We're putting together a new a new thing. What would be called now the STEM program is what, what, what it was. Oh, so wow. instead, instead of learning about rockets, about rockets, we built rockets. rockets. Instead of mm-hmm. instead, instead of, of you know looking at pictures of anatomy, we dissected a fetal pig, which is ninety nine percent like our body when it came when it comes to anatomy and what they have inside, have inside of, it. of it. You know, you so know, all mm-hmm. these hands on things, and yes. that's that. I mean, once that happened, I became so interested in sciences. Sciences were never tough for me. They were exciting for me, even through high school, through college, awesome. and all that. So. So if you're out there and you and STEM is a possibility for your ADHD ADHD student, try the STEM program because it, it it's a different way of learning. See, like our school system has a separate building, a whole separate building that all four high schools send students that want to be in STEM to that high school. It's a it's a fifth high school, but it's built off of the other four high schools. Wow. And, and and it's its, it's own stem. stem. My son was in it for one year and did all kinds of great stuff. And it led him to the career center that led him to what he's doing now on, on a full-time basis. So it can Absolutely. start as early as that. Yeah. Yeah. And for anyone listening and that doesn't know what STEM is, it's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Yeah, yep. exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Fantastic. Yes. So tell us, um, we'll go ahead and wrap this up and just tell yes. people how to get a hold of you, what services you provide. Of course, all the links will be below um, uh, to get a hold of Christina and find yes. out if her services are what you need and what you would like to have. And I'm sure she gives some sort of free consultation. We all do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. I do. So to find me, I have a Facebook group and I have an Kyle's going to drop the links. I also have an Instagram and I'm calm underscore underscore minds. My business is called Calm Minds and my Facebook group, my goodness, I think it's Calm Minds, uh, raising kids with ADHD or supporting kids with ADHD, but you'll see the link. Um, I do offer a free consult. So please hop on if you have a child with ADHD or you suspect that they have ADHD, we can talk through that together. I do have a freebie. It's an ADHD guide for parents. And it will really, really help you understand your ADHD child's brain, uh, as well as effective tools to support them at home. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on, Christina. For those listeners out there, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to yet another episode of the Ignition Path podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Uh, Share meaning if you hear someone, you, you have a, 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 a sister-in-law that has a you think has an ADHD child or no no, yes. no that, that may not that may not go over like hey I think you need this no but <laughs> no but yeah in all in all seriousness we have I we we had people contact us that were loved ones of ours and said hey have you ever thought about getting you know Carter you know uh you know uh diagnosed with ADHD you could have some you know there could be you know, we were, we were totally, totally against medication, medication. so don't yeah. think if you get diagnosed with, with that's another no. thing. Whoa, yeah, yeah. It, don't, don't think, think if you have a child that may be diagnosed with ADHD, don't think that medication is the only answer because it's not. We we chose no. not to do medication and did the stuff that Christina and I talked to, and we were able to manage my son very easily. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, my um, I have a family member whose son is being diagnosed right now, and. They're like, oh my gosh, but we're not putting our child on medication. Like, you okay. don't have to. You don't have to. There's so many natural the ways to support your ADHD child. And take out all the dye. Take out all the dye. I wish I'm, I'm, that's one thing yes. I wish that our our, our uh, food system could do is get I rid know. of all the dye. I would I love that. But yes. illegal. It's illegal in Europe to put dye in food. I know. How is it not illegal here? Right. Oh, and ADHD brains need a lot of protein, just as a last mm. tip. Okay. So, Good. All right. Yeah. yeah I did, that's a, that's a, see, I learned something new. Even though I lived through it, I didn't know that the protein was a huge factor. So. Yes. Awesome. All right. <laughs> thanks, all right, Christina, thanks, so Christina, much so for much. coming on the Ignition Path podcast, and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Bye, everybody. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to Ignition Path, fueling the entrepreneurial fire.